Current estimates hold the population will reach 9 billion by 2038. One of the major problems we face is feeding everyone. Diseases are at an all-time high. The current model for food production is unhealthy and unsustainable. There's got to be a better way. Scientists say that if 14% of the world planted a permaculture garden or some type of garden just in their backyard, we can replenish the entire earth. So we're setting out to find people who are doing things differently. We'll be looking into alternatives to current food practices that are damaging our health and environment. We'll be meeting the chefs, farmers, restaurateurs, and entrepreneurs who are making a difference. And you'll find out just how easy it is for you to become a part of the solution. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We'll be eating the freshest food, meeting amazing people, and seeing what we can do to become a healthier, more environmentally friendly world right here on The Fork and Truth. So where does our food even come from? Well, more than likely it comes from a factory farm or a CAFO, a concentrated animal feeding operation. CAFOs weren't even in existence until the end of the 20th century. They were built to produce more food on less land for a lower cost. Then they shipped their products halfway across the United States and sometimes to different parts of the world to be processed and packaged before it even makes it to your local grocery store. I mean, think about all the fossil fuels that are wasted in that process. Plus, CAFOs are one of the world's biggest air pollutants by their release of ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and methane. They give the animals antibiotics, and to top it all off, pump them full of hormones so that they can grow faster and become those juicy, plump chicken breasts or steaks that consumers have come to expect. These methods are damaging us and our environment. So is there a better way? Well, stick around because on this episode, we're exploring a place that just may have the answers. Today, we're here at Black Cat Farm, run by Chef Eric Skoke and his wife, Jill, and their family. It's a 500-acre farm that houses sheep, pigs, 250 different heirloom and heritage-type produce, and much, much more. Come with me. Let's explore this farm. I've always had a passion for cooking. My mom is a spectacular cook. My grandmothers, both of them, were really spectacular cooks as well. I worked in restaurants, and I loved the chaos and the speed and the, the intensity of it. And you know what? I love to eat. Put all those things together, you know, so I realized that was going to be a calling for me. So what are we heading to? We're harvesting beets for the farmer's market, and the restaurant needs beets as well. I found this old heirloom seed called Three Root Grex, totally obscure. So this variety, there'll be some that are hot pink, some that are golden, there'll be some that are light pale pink. So every beet that you pull up, it's kind of like a surprise. So what do we have here? Summer squash. We grow nine varieties. And this is a patty pan right here. So it's a scallop-shaped squash. The flower is edible as well as the squash, so we'll try and keep the flower attached. You'll notice some flowers have a short stalk and some have a long stalk. The long stalk ones are male flowers. These are the ideal ones for stuffing with fresh cheese or a shrimp mousse. Or... Can I try it? Yeah, please do. It's all good. Yeah, they're great. So tell us a little bit about your model. Do you incorporate permaculture? Yeah, we do. You know, philosophically, a sustainable permaculture model is really the holy grail. We've tried to grab onto the essence of permaculture, all the techniques that are really applicable, and build that into a model that has a really substantial yield, works well for the restaurant, kind of balances all the things together. You know, and part of that is integrating, just like they did 100 years ago, integrating animals uh, into the vegetable operation. Not at the same time, but the animals are in a field, and then the next year it's vegetables, and then you switch back and forth and back and forth. So this is gonna end up next season somewhere else? Yeah, this will be on the other side of the farm. We've kind of split the farm, it's like a mirror image. In year one, it's this. In year two, this will be over there, and then there'll be pigs here. 
uh, for the said, soil and to... Exactly. So when we're done with a field, we put up a temporary electric fence and we let all of our hogs in. And hogs are grazing animals. They'll go through and they'll eat down all the plants that are left over. Right now they're in a field of peas on the other side of the farm. They love the weeds. They go nuts for weeds. They flip the soil over. They go after the eggs of the bugs that were left there. So they're actually part of our pest control. And then of course, they're manuring the soil at the same time. So they're building up soil fertility while they live there. So they take care of all the, all the work for you then? Yep, they do it. They do the work. And that's a tremendous agriculture model. It is how farms operated up until about 30 or 40 years ago. And you don't use any chemicals or? No chemicals. We use speed and dexterity and lots of planning to stay one or two steps ahead of the insects. You know, if you grow the same plant in the same place a couple years in a row, the insects will start to build up over time and pretty soon they're just everywhere and you can't get rid of them unless you resort to chemicals. <laughs> Definitely a family operation here at Black Hat. And what are we doing today, Kelsey? We've cut the hay about three days ago, and now we're creating windrows so we can run a baler over it and create hay bales. Middle, second, third up, down. I feel like Kevin Bacon and Footloose. Holy moly! Perfect. Sheep eating 100% grass fed, or do you guys finish off with grain, or how, how do you go about that? We stay grass fed the whole time. When you really push sheep by giving them a lot of grain, a lot of alfalfa, which makes growth happen really fast, the flavor just really deteriorates. All the really strong tasting lamb that no one likes, that's usually how that's produced. And ultimately for us, it's all about flavor, and flavor takes time. You guys do CSAs. Can you tell us what a CSA yeah. is? CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. It's a subscription where the customer would purchase a share of the produce at the beginning of the year. Essentially, it's an interest-free loan for the farmer. The farmer gets to use that capital to start the farm going and have some revenue before the tomatoes themselves are ready. And in exchange, there's a great relationship you know, and ultimately a discount on the tomato price. Our goal is to have not the most food and not the most profitable food, but have the right amount of the best food right. every day, year round, for the customers in the restaurant, for the CSA customers, our customers at the farmer's market. So instead right. of pack all the animals on and try and make a nickel, right. uh, it's really get everything to work in balance. Whatever the land is telling us to do, we're going in that direction with it instead of fighting against it. And of course, it's not just happenstance. It's meticulous planning, forecasting, and testing, and then a lot of hard work. That's it. Boom. Salad. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how it is done at Black Cat Farm. Mm. Oh, God. Okay, Chip. Thanks for the goods. All right. We'll see you in the morning at I'll the market. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to get these over to Black Cat Bistro. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. We're just a small family restaurant with a big farm and a broad vision. We want to cook really simple food for the guests in the dining room, and we want the dining room to be as close as possible to the farm, and so we harvest every single day. We cook simple, delicious food, and then hopefully everyone leaves happy. Brought you some ingredients from the farm. So the first step will be to hollow out summer squash, and I'm choosing tennis ball-sized pieces that are roasting really well. Make a nice 
the scoop and out it comes, just like that. So this is Moroccan lamb sausage. So it's our lamb. We do the butchery here in the restaurant. We grind it and add lots and lots of spices, tons of garlic. And I'll stuff it inside our summer squashes. For an entree, we'll do three of them. It might be lamb sausage. It might be ratatouille. There's tons and tons of ways that you can use them. So the next step is fill these squash blossoms with our farmer's cheese mousse. So when we put these into the oven to bake them, when they're just warm, they're ready. So it's really just a couple of minutes. This looks absolutely amazing. Why don't you tell me what we have going on here? All right, sourdough toast with apple butter, toasted almonds, and lemon basil. Then uh, deviled eggs. I grew up eating these. My grandmother was uh, famous for deviled eggs. This is her recipe. I can't take credit for it. Roasted carrots with a pistachio sauce. Then a pad thai, rice noodles, and a collection of everything that we're harvesting at the farm right now. Uh, tot soy on top and lime. It's spicy and delicious. Really great. What yeah, are you going to go good. for first? Oh, I love the carrots. Carrots? Yeah. I'm a carrot fanatic. What made you start growing food yourself? As I was building out the restaurant, I had been gardening, and I was growing peas, and when you're standing in the garden and you open up a shelling pea and you eat them fresh when they're small and sweet and delicious, it's like magic inside of a little pea pot. I mean, they're really spectacular. And I remember thinking if I could get every customer from the restaurant into the garden to eat the peas with me and then taste that magic, that my life as a chef would be so easy. So I harvested a bunch of peas and I brought them into the restaurant and you know, restaurants are chaotic and I didn't cook them that night and I didn't cook them the next night. Several days later, I found them again deep in the refrigerator and I decided to cook them. And when I did, there wasn't any magic left. They were just peas. And I realized that the time between harvest and plate, that was the critical element in making all the food sing. So I knew that if I could get the vegetables out of the fields and race them into the restaurant, get them onto the plate, and do it simply, that the magic would still be there. And everybody needs magic in their lives. So this is the stuffed squash that we prepared in the kitchen earlier? Yeah, that's right. That squash blossom is awesome. Wow. A nice subtle lamb flavor. And the ingredients truly speak for themselves. You can really taste the lamb. You can really taste that fresh squash. There are not a lot of tricks that are happening. It's just simple techniques done really well. Oh, it's working. This morning we're at the Boulder Farmers Market. The market began in 1987 and today houses more than 150 participants. Everything from fresh produce, honey, mushrooms, bread, coffee, fresh flowers, literally everything you need. Eric jumps from the restaurant to the farm to the farmers market to make sure you're getting the healthiest, freshest food. It's pretty impressive. It's been an absolutely amazing experience here at Black Cat. We've learned a lot. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And look into this guy, he's doing it all. Both him and his family, it's pretty impressive what they're doing here. Thanks Eric, Thank you. appreciate it. Yep.